All right, this is fourth grade, module four, lesson seven. And in this lesson, uh, we're going to be using the area model uh, to show that two fractions are equivalent. And then we're going to show that those there's a beautiful pattern with those two fractions in that the numerator and the denominator are both being multiplied by the same thing. Essentially, this lesson is where we really hit home that standard algorithm that shows the relationship between two equivalent fractions. So for a lot of parents and, and teachers, this lesson is really going to start to feel familiar. So <clears throat> we're going to begin by looking at this fraction, and we can begin by seeing that this fraction is one half, right? And then because they've cut that each of those halves in half into two pieces, we now see that one half is now, we, we just cut them into fourths. And that we can see that one half is equivalent to two fourths. So we see that one half is equivalent to two fourths. And the idea is to recognize that, oh, there's a really cool pattern. That if we multiply the 1 and the 2 by 2, that suddenly we see the connection between 1 half and 2 fourths. That both the numerator and the denominator, in this case, are being multiplied by 2. So let's connect this thinking over here with an example of our own. So we can see we, we begin right here with, uh, let's see, right here. This thing right here, that's one half. But then we can see that we've been, we cut horizontally. And now, all of a sudden, instead of having one half, we now have four eighths. And so the idea is, What's our connection? Well, our connection is we see that 1 times 4 is 4, and 2 times 4 is 8. And so there's our connection. That 1 half is equivalent to 4 eighths because both the numerator and the denominator are being multiplied by the same thing. Now, why does this make sense? Why does this make sense? Well, if you think about it, when we say one-half, and when we started with one-half, what did we do? Well, we took each of these halves, and we cut each of those halves into four pieces. So each of the halves got cut into four pieces, giving us eight pieces total. And that one piece that was shaded it also got cut into four pieces. So now suddenly we have four pieces that are shaded out of eight. And that's why this idea, this standard algorithm makes sense, is because of this picture is helping us recognize that. So here we're supposed to decompose these shaded fractions into smaller units using that area model and then show them show the equivalence using multiplication. So we begin, we've got one-third. And, oh, let's cut this into three pieces. In, into each, we're going to cut each third into three pieces. So each of these thirds got cut into three pieces. So each third got cut into three pieces, and that gives us nine pieces total. Can you see it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And the one piece that was shaded in also got cut into three pieces, so we now have three ninths. So the idea is, kind of backtrack a little bit there, one third is equivalent to three ninths. Now, I'm explaining it slightly different from uh, the way Eureka Math is, but I'm hoping you can read the Eureka Math content, augment it with my explanation, and then parents and teachers, you can really explain this and feel competent explaining this to your students. 
So let's do another one right here. So we've got right here, um, right here, we've got one fourth. And let's see, let's just cut it into, oh, let's do uh, thirds again. Let's cut each of those pieces into three pieces. So each fourth has been cut into three pieces. So now we end up with, way over here, we end up with three twelfths. How do I know that we have three twelfths? Because we have one, two, three pieces are shaded in. That's the three. And we have 12 pieces total, so there's the 12. Now what, where's the cool connection? The cool connection is, well, each of these four fourths were cut into three pieces. So that's four times three. That gives us 12 pieces total. So we had four pieces total, but each of them were cut into three, so now we have 12 pieces total. We had one piece shaded in right here, but it got cut into three pieces, so we now have three pieces that are shaded in. So there's your connection right there. Here, the idea is we're going to get to start with one-fourth, and our, we want our students to shade that, or cut that into eighths, twelfths, and sixteenths. So we have one-fourth each time. But this time, we want this guy to be cut into eighths, this guy to be cut into twelfths, and this guy to be cut into sixteenths. Well, to get eighths, you cut it in half. To get twelfths, you cut it into each fourth gets cut into three pieces. And to get sixteenths, each fourth is going to be cut into four pieces. So heading back up here, if you had fourths and now you have eighths, that means each fourth was multiplied by two, got cut in half, multiplied by two. And so the one-fourth that was shaded is now multiplied by two as well. And you get two, two-eighths. Right here, we're going to see, well, we had one and four, but now it's four times three is twelve. So one times three gives us three. And then lastly, we're going to squeeze this in. We had our 1 and 4, but 4 times 4 is 16, so 1 times 4 gives us 4. Now, parents and teachers, I'm going through this fairly quickly. So the idea is you're going to be going a little bit slower, a little bit more in-depth with your students to show the connection between the mathematics that's going over here and the geometry that's happening over here. There is a connection, and we want the students to always see the connection between the geometry and the mathematics. And that wraps up fourth grade, module five, lesson seven, using multiplication to make equivalent fractions.